what are some of the strengths and weaknesses in Golovkin? And what do you have to do in order to exploit those weaknesses for Jacobs to become the victor? Well, I don't think there's any massive obvious weaknesses yet in his career because no one's really, really talking close, have they? But, you know, he, he is there to be hit, you know, in the sense that, you know, he's not, he's not a bar of soap like Mayweather. You know, he's there, he has, you know, he keeps his hands up and everything, he's good timing, but, you know, you can hit him, he does get hit, but I think he has a good chin. Yeah. I do think he has a good chin, I think he believes in his chin, and uh, I think he believes in his power, you know, so obviously. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's difficult. I think, look, Danny Jacobs hits very hard, he's got good speed, he's a really nice boxer, but I do think that, um, I don't know if, I think, as soon as he feels Golovkin's power, he'll probably be on the back foot. Right. When he's on the back foot, I'm not sure he has the same leverages I see what you're in his punches. So, yeah. you know, it's just I think Danny's day. I think he'd be dangerous early on, but I think once Golovkin gets him on the back foot, it's, it's going to be a matter of time then. Any thoughts on the return of Fury? He says he's coming back in May. You think that's going to happen? You think he's going to stick to it? Who knows? <laughs> Tyson Fury. Hopefully. Exactly, I was thinking that when I you mean, mentioned I hope, it. I hope so, because he's a character, you know, I think the sport needs characters, and he's certainly one of them, and, and, I, and I think he's one of the best heavyweights in the world. You know, he's, he's certainly the most awkward. You know, he beat Klitschko, no one else could. Yeah. You know, he believed in himself, didn't he? Absolutely believed in himself. And uh, six foot nine, good, got yeah. quite a fast jab, quite mobile for a big guy. I was going to say that, he's you got know, a good mobility. He's yeah. awkward, you know, he goes southpaw, then he comes forward, then he boxes. You know, he's got four, five, six different styles going on yeah. at the same time. Difficult to read, something like that. You just wonder if he can regain that, that composure again that he once had. You just, you just don't want him to have been a Buster Douglas. That got it, got it yeah. great for one night and then <clears throat> did nothing after. So, you know, he got there. Now you want him to cash in and you want him to, be, you want him to fight Wilder. You want him to fight Joshua. You want him to fight David, whoever. You want these big fights to happen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because I think, he, you know, on ability and... Uh, he, he's a, he, you know, you could say he's the best heavyweight in the world. And perhaps he's just satisfied with just winning the crown well, and just calling it a day. Yeah, that's what you hope hasn't happened. That's what you hope hasn't happened. And one of my last questions, how shocked were you, or perhaps you were not, Bellu scoring the knockout over David Hay? No, I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked, yeah. I thought, I thought Hay would win early. <laughs> or, if he didn't get him out of there early, then I thought it'd get interesting because he'd only had two kind of nothing fights in five years and value yeah. would be very active been involved in tough competitive fights so you know it would get interesting after six if it wasn't out there but it was just a bizarre fight you know the leg obviously the Achilles right, visibly the Achilles. see that the Achilles went then there's some severe damage yeah to that you leg, can see yeah. that was bothering him but even before that I thought his timing was way <clears> out his distance was way out you know he was lunging he was missing wildly yeah he was swinging like you a madman I mean he was he was way out you know um but, you know, if the Achilles hadn't happened, I don't know how the fight would have played out. Uh, but, you know, Balu, in fairness to him, did, not many people gave him a chance, yeah. and he did it. And are you going to be in attendance for uh, Anthony Joshua versus Vladimir Klitschko? And do you feel that AJ is catching Klitschko at the right time? Or does Klitschko just has enough experience? Do you know what? It's a, it's, I'm not sure, because I think, you know, it's he... Klitschko's been going a long time, so, you know, you could say he was there for the taking, but I don't, I don't know, I mean, I think that's not really giving Tyson Fury enough credit, you know, Tyson Fury's very awkward, he's six foot nine, big guy, and I think more than anything, he absolutely believed in himself that he was going to beat Klitschko, where I'm not sure every other fighter that fights Klitschko thinks that, and so, was Klitschko poor or was Fury good, you know, and I think it's probably a little bit of both, but, um, but, you know, it was uh, Joshua. Joshua's more stand up, isn't he? He's kind of stand up. Yeah. You know, he's more predictable, he's more readable than Tyson Fury, who, like I say, changes styles mid fight. You yeah. know, and he's a big guy. You know, Andy Joshua's a big guy. He's an athlete, but he, he is kind of, he does stand in front of you. He is there to be hit. Anyone else who's done that with gets knocked out. So, interesting fight. Mm, I like the breakdown. Very good. I like the boxing IQ this man has. Thank you.